Concerning the ISS air leak, the International Space Station continues to lose air and NASA still can't find why that's happening. What is the source of this leak? Now, we know that the air, there is a leak that naturally takes place and they replenish air with uh, new cargo shipments to the ISS, but this is happening too fast. Now, NASA is struggling to identify this elusive leak on the International Space Station, on the uh, US segments, and uh, it's forced the astronauts to remain in the Russian segments of this laboratory. Last week, NASA announced its Chris Cassidy and its Russian crewmates, Ivan Wagner and Anatoly Ivanishin, would spend the weekend inside the uh, lab, the Russian uh, segments of the lab. But in doing so, NASA hoped that it would be able to uh, find the air pressure in different parts of the ISS in order to look at where the leak is. Now, the ISS is constantly losing a tiny amount every day. But recently, NASA noted that the space station has been losing a lot more than normal. The ISS is orbiting more than 400 kilometers above the Earth's surface, and it needs a constant supply of fresh oxygen, obviously, meaning fresh air. But when the ship begins to lose oxygen, more so than it normally does, it becomes a cause, of course, for concern. This means that the astronauts would become asphyxiated. But NASA has so far been unable to identify the source of the leak, which is said presents no immediate danger to the crew or the space station, forcing Cassidy to remain in the Roscosmos section, the Russian Space Agency segment, until earlier this week. NASA said Mission Control will study the test data this week in an effort to determine the source of the cabin air leak detected in September of 2019. The rate is still well within segment specifications and presents no danger to the crew or the space station. The station's atmosphere is maintained at a pressure comfortable for the crew members and a tiny bit of that air leak over time, requiring routine repressurization from nitrogen tanks delivered on cargo resupply missions. Now, the last time a major leak came was in 2018, which was somewhat mysterious and sparked a mini war of words between NASA and Roscosmos. On August 29, 2018, astronauts on the ISS awoke to discover a leak on the space station was causing it to lose oxygen. Six people on the ISS hurried to find the minute hole on the Soyuz MS-09 spacecraft, a shuttle which ferried Russian astronauts to and from the ISS and was ultimately docked there before they ran out of air. It was originally thought the leak, which was quickly discovered and sealed, was caused by a tiny meteor which hit the ISS, but an investigation from Roscosmos revealed shortly after that the, it was not the case. Over the ensuing year, discussions around the incident went quiet. Roscosmos bosses reopened the dialogue, but teased NASA with the secret. Dmitry Rogozin, head of Roscosmos, revealed the probe has determined the course of the two millimeter hole, but that agency is not giving up its secrets. What caused it? Ros Rogozin told a youth science conference the hole was in the living quarters of the capsule. It has long since burned up upon re-entry. We took all the samples, he said. We know exactly what happened, but we won't tell you anything. We do need to retain some sort of secrecy. Well, in my book, that does not mean we can partner with you Roscosmos, if you know what caused this hole and you're not telling NASA, NASA should not be uh, having partnered uh, astronaut missions with you. If you know what caused that hole, you should, uh, you should uh, inform NASA about this. Now, the question in my book is, could such a similar hole have taken place, have been created somehow, and they're not telling NASA about this, and in the meantime, they're losing air. This is totally unacceptable. Anyway, tell me what you think. This is by Sean Martin, Express UK. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events. 
events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece, in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.